at yourself in whatever key you can find yourself in. <laughs> Yes, God. Come on, let's get church this morning. When two or three of us are gathered in his name, he said he'll be in the midst of us. Hey, Tasha, good morning, Helena. Come on, Ecclesia. Come on, gathering of the people of God. Hey, Bree, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Sonia. Been through too much, people of God. Been through too much. Pay you later. Well, well. Come on, people of God. Come on, come on, come on. Give him praise. I know that's right. Thank you, Alexis. Good morning, Brother Reggie. Good morning, Vanessa. How many of you been through too much? Not to at least lift your hands. Yes, yes, Michonne. Too much, too much, too much. Too much, too much. Big ambition. Good morning, Shanilla. Good morning, people of God. Hey, hey, how's everybody doing? Hey, Maxine. Uh, hey, college. Uh, colleague, good morning. Hey, everybody, how y'all doing this morning? Jatisha, good morning, good morning. Hey, guys, this is our last day on great, good wall, good floors make great ceilings. I wanted to invite you guys that uh, Thursday and Friday, uh, Michi will be doing uh, Wake Up With The Word, and then next week, um, we'll uh, bring Elder Jason, will come back. He's going to share again with us next week uh, on Wake Up With The Word, so be encouraged. Hey, I wanted to invite you guys. I am preaching this Sunday. I'm preaching this Sunday at our church. You should be there. It's uh, the title of the sermon is uh, "This is just too small." This is just too small. Uh, have you ever, um, at, a, at any period of your life, wore shoes that were cute, but they were just too small? And, and you knew they were too small when you put them on, but you weighed uh, their cuteness against your being uncomfortable. And, and so I want to talk to you uh, this Sunday about when to know that something or someone is just too small. And, and what do you do when you've come to that fork in the road, when you've discovered that your mindset has outgrown the confines of where you are. And so I'm going to help you, brothers and sisters, uh, get, the, get the faith that you need to give those small shoes away and allow God to bless you with shoes that fit you. Amen. Amen. And so, so be out on Sunday morning, 11 o'clock. I am preaching. Uh, tell everybody I, I haven't preached in a while. So tell everybody I am back on the pulpit this, this morning. I mean, this, this Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. I uh, look forward to seeing everybody. All right. Hebrews chapter number four, verse number one through two this morning, we're saying, therefore, since the promise of entering his rest is still it still stands. That's what he says. That's, that's what the writer of Hebrews says. He says, therefore, since the promise of entering into God's rest still stands, let us be careful that none of us, none of you be found to have fallen short of entering into God's rest. For, here's, here's, his, here's his parallel. He says, for we have the, had the, the good news Proclaim to us just as the children of Israel did. But the message that they heard was of no value to their lives because they did not mix what they heard with the faith so that they could obey it. So, okay, let me set the stage just for a few seconds. Okay, God brings two million Israelites out of Egypt as they watch their enemies drowned around them in the in the Red Sea without them having to throw a spear or swing a sword. 
They are now on their way, my brothers and sisters, into God's rest, his promised land, the land that the Bible says flows with milk and honey. The two things that you need to make, make reference here is the, the flowing of milk and honey or the milk and honey were the two uh, uh, symbols in that day of prosperity. Because if you had milk and you had honey, you had more than the necessities of life. And you were flowing, you were balling, you were, you were a shot caller. So, so God had promised that his children, uh, as they came out of Egypt and on their way to the promised land, that he had promised them, hear me now, a land that flows with prosperity and peace. That the milk and honey represented prosperity and and peace. And so he said that they would they would be able to to be live in a land or live in a society, live in a place, live in a in a state of mind where they would uh, enjoy perpetual peace and perpetual prosperities. Look at yourself in your mind and say now now, now that's high ceilings. That's that's high ceiling. God has promised these ex-slaves, hear me now, that in a few days they will enjoy a debt-free, carefree, and rival-free living. He shares with them that soon they will live in houses that, that they never had to take out a mortgage on. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, they would be able to eat from vines that they would not even had to have plant and toiled over. Uh, oh, catch this, Holy Spirit. And and be and enjoy grapes from the vine that were so big that it would take two men to carry the clusters of grapes. The, the grapes were so large that it would take two men to carry a bunch of grapes. That's high ceilings, brothers and sisters. And here's what I'm here to tell you is that God has promised us the same thing he promised them back then. And the question is, brothers and sisters, will we, in fact, heed the word that we're hearing and mix it with faith so that it will indeed profit us or bring value to our lives. I'm excited as you can imagine. More than they could ever ask or think was God's promise to them. This would be the Lord's doing and it would be marvelous in their eyes. This morning, my brothers and sisters, I want to talk about who gets the credit for your high ceilings. Who who gets the credit for the blessings that you now enjoy? Who gets the credit for the peace that you have in your heart? Who gets the credit for the joy that you have that is unspeakable? Who gets the credit for the house you live in, for the clothes you wear, for the food that you eat? Who gets the credit? Do you give the credit to your own toil? Do you give the credit to the to your own work? Do you give the credit to your own ethic or have you come to realize that it's not by might and it's not by power, but it is by the spirit of the living God that you are where you are today. Who, who supplied you all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus? Do you consider yourself your own supplier or simply the beneficiary of the blessings that you enjoy? You see, my brothers and sisters, God's God builds ceilings that last for generation if we build floors that he has designed. That here, here, Here's what you need to say, that God will build the ceiling if we will build the floor. That, that, that we have become accustomed to building our own ceilings that fall apart in a matter of, of a minute. It cannot handle a, a storm. It cannot handle a breakup. It can't handle a loss of a friend. It can't handle a loss of a job because you alone are building your ceilings instead of building your floor. The Holy Spirit told me to tell you this morning um, that, that you need to concentrate on not where you live, but how you live. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all of these other things, the ceilings, the Bible says, Jesus has already promised, my friends, that he'll make a way for us to have what we need in excess. But the problem is, brothers and sisters, that we're in a society now where people have abandoned the kingdom of God and start to use those that time and that effort in building a kingdom that will 
will not last. They're building homes that won't last. That they're building uh, jobs and careers that won't last. They're they're trying to build family structures and educational pursuits that won't last. And brothers and sisters, here's what pastor is trying to tell you: that by the Holy Spirit, you need to make sure that you. Build your hope on not the things that you that are are temporary, but you need to build the lifestyle. So Jesus told me to tell you that don't worry about where you're going to eat, uh, what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear. The, the, the Bible says he already has that covered, but you need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And, and so I got to move in Exodus. God then outlines for the children of Israel, as they are heading toward the promised land, ground rules, floor rules. Uh, we know them as the Ten Commandments, uh, floor rules that will govern them in the society in which they live in so that they would not uh, operate in the lifestyle of the people that are surrounding them. He says, you're going to live in the middle of the Hittites and the Jebusites, uh, but I don't want you to live like them. I want you to live like I'm telling you to live. I want you to have faith in me that, e that even though you may see people around you uh, hating one another and taking advantage of one another and divorcing one another and lying to one another and getting over on one another, I don't want you to live like the other people who are living around you. I want you to pay attention to building your floor life, your, your lifestyle on the rules and the governance that I've put in place. They, they, they are to trust him enough to live under his rules and trust his commands. You know the story. As they moved outside of Egypt, they, moved, they first came into this place called Jericho. And the Bible says, you hear me now, that the Bible says that and the walls were shut up, that no man came into Jericho and no man came out of Jericho. And, and I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, here, Pastor, when I tell you that, that God is putting you in front of something that seems insurmountable, that, that seems like by your own strength and by your own education, by your own intellect, you are unable to get to that place. But if you would just simply trust God, if you would stop worrying and stop fussing and stop complaining and stop con conniving and stop conjoling and stop co coordinating with those who are ungodly and joining yourself to people who don't love God, if you would start to heed God's warning and just... Just trust him. Hear me now. I'm talking to somebody this morning. If you just trust him, God has promised that he'll find He'll find a way to bring that wall down and you would walk in into your promised land. He, he outlines these God rules and he just says to them, have faith and resist the trappings of trying to be like other nations that appear to be prosperous, but soon will be cut down. You can read Proverbs for that. Uh, God builds ceiling, ceilings, brothers and sisters, if we build walls. It, now, here's what Paul says. Now, here's what I want to tell you. The three things, the three things that have to be in your floor, the three components that, that should make up how you live your life. These three things, Paul says, now these things remain faith, hope, and love. The importance of faith, hope, and love as virtues, as, as floors in our lives have long been celebrated. Some consider these three theological virtues as the values for Christian mankind and, our, and solidifies our relationship with God. Mm. Uh, here, how can I help you? That that the Bible says that it is faith, hope, and love that if, if you keep these things at the center of your mind and as the, the, the vehicle by which you live your life, you will discover that the thing that you prayed for, for heaven uh, to be in your earthly realm, will come to pass. Uh, faith, hope, and love are discussed individually throughout the scriptures. In the New Testament, uh, however, 1 Corinthians, Apostle Paul mentions these three virtues together and then goes to identify love as the most important of the three. I'm not going to be before you long, but I don't know. Paul first to the Corinthians was aimed to refocus, uh, hear me now, uh, believers in Corinth who were struggling with matters of disunity, immorality, and immaturity. 
and and I'm I'm preaching to the same type of people today is that 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 you need to understand that while you're spinning your energies and spinning your wheels on doing things that are immature that are immor immoral and that brings disunity to the body of Christ Paul said if you want to check on what's important digging coals God bless you brother if you want to check in on what's important and what you need to make sure you focus your life on is three things not on whether or not you get a brand new car or whether you get a brand new house or whether you find Find a husband or a wife or whether you get that master's or that doctorate degree. I know that's wonderful, but that should not be your focus. Your focus should be on, am I faithful? Am I, do I ever have, do I, I ever increase my hope in God? And am I a person of love? Where is your faith? God builds our ceilings on our floor of our faith. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number six, now without faith, it is impossible to please God for he who comes to God must first believe that he is, uh-huh, and that he's a rewarder of them that do what? That diligently seek him, that, that our floor life is that every day I'm not seeking after fame, I'm not seeking after fortune, I am seeking after the presence of the Lord. And when I seek after God diligently by faith, the Bible says God will reward them that diligently seek after him. Hey, Brother David, um... So without faith, my brothers, and when Jesus healed the woman of the issue of blood, you remember the story? The Bible says she healed that woman according, y'all talk back to me, according to what? According to her faith. To the centurion that wanted Jesus to heal his servant. Uh, Jesus says he healed that man according to his faith. And, and most of us are not receiving the best of God because our faith is so weak that even when the Bible says, you remember the story that the Bible says that Jesus could do no great miracles in that city because of their lack of faith, that, that we have money and we have clothes and we, we have cars, we have houses, but we have no faith. And, and therefore, uh, our, our churches are filled with uh, uh, people who seem to be prosperous, but inwardly are, are filled with dead man's bones. That, that we have no power to fight against the enemy because we just, we think fighting against the enemy is moving away and, and, and running away. But, but I believe that if we really are in tune to the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, if we have faith in God, uh, we would be able to fight the enemy. Uh, and, and the Bible says, and the gates of hell will not prevail against us. We will go into the enemy's camp and pull our children out. We'll go back into the enemy camp and pull our relationships out. I, I got to move. I can't preach this morning. Faith in God must be a component of your everyday life. Num number two, um, we must keep our hope intact. Centuries before Christ, a Greek philosopher named Thaleus the most, uh, said the most universal thing is hope. For hope stays with those who have nothing else. Uh -huh. In a period of time when everything else is changing around us, brothers and sisters, in a period of tremendous personal um, uh, uh, situations that are going and lost, the Apostle Paul penned the inspiring words, and now these things remain. Uh, Trump is not going to always be in the White House, but these things will remain. Um, uh, that you need to put your hope not on whose political party you are affiliated with, not your sorority, not your fraternity, not your not your school, not your ethnic orientation, not your cultural bias, but brothers and sisters, these things will remain. Uh, hope uh, hope is the is to life what oxygen is to breathing. I got to slow down. That that hope is to your life what oxygen is to your breathing. Where there is hope, 
There is always light. The Bible says that, uh, that there is hope for all that is living. For, for a live dog is better than a dead lion. That, that even if you're going through a doggish life right now, that as long as you are still breathing and as long as you still hope, uh, it, it, you, you are available for God's promises. But it does not matter, brothers and sisters, what happens to you if you lose hope. Hope keeps us moving forward. No individual can imagine a living life without hope. Hope fuels us in the face of impossible challenges. Hope is the expectation that we will obtain what we will desire. Hope is the special gift from God to, uh, to us by his grace to combat the day-to-day -day monotony of difficult circumstances. Hope encourages us to keep running the race until we finish the, the course. Uh -huh. Now, the final thing, my brothers and sisters, if you, if you have um, hope in your life and if you have faith in your life, then what will spurn out of you, help me, Holy Ghost, is love. Yeah, yeah, my brothers and sisters, uh, I can tell how faithful you are by how loving you are. I can tell how holy you are by how loving you are. I can tell how hopeful you are by how loving you are. I, I taught a, ser a series a few years ago in our church about the scarcity mindset. And when you believe that someone has your stuff, when you believe that the white man has your stuff or you believe that the Republicans have your stuff, you start to believe that there is a small, minute period of, of the pie that got, that the, somebody is stealing from you and therefore you have ceased to learn how to love them. When you feel like somebody has your wife, you can't love them. When you feel like somebody's living in your house, you can't love them. When you feel like someone's driving your car, you can't love them. But when you start to believe that the the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and that person does not have mine, that God already has something in store for me that is no longer, I no longer have to be jealous or envious or covetousness over what you have because I don't believe that God just has one car. I don't believe that God just has one house. I just don't believe that God has one husband. I believe that whatever is for me is for me and I don't have to be jealous of you. I can love you where God has you and believe God for what he has for me. Mm. We couldn't live our lives, my brothers and sisters, without faith or without hope. We cannot live our love without love. God wants us to do everything. Everything you do, you must do it in love. But in spite of the importance of faith, hope, love is the most crucial thing that you must have in your floor. Because without love, the Bible teaches, there can be no redemption of sin. That Jesus has sent his son to die on the cross for us. That's a supreme act of sacrificial love. Jesus died on the cross for us from love, but that love was not simply about him giving something for you because he already knew what God the Father had in store for him. That, that love, that virtue is upon which faith and hope stands on. That, 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 that we've, if we live, if we are to live our life to the fullest, no matter what our problems may be, my brothers and sisters, if we live life to the fullest, we will be loved and remembered after we're long and gone. Long day, our days are gone. No matter what we offer each other, no matter what we do for each other, we must never forget to love one another. If, if, if you wish to live a life with high ceilings, you must focus in on your floor, your hope, your faith, and your love. And then God will provide the ceiling higher than any of us could ever ask or think. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for giving us the power to enter into your rest. Uh, the children of Israel missed out because they lacked faith. They stood on the, the doors of the promised land, but started to calculate in their own mind their own futility. And, and because, God, uh, you've instructed us to, to look at their example and make sure that the word we hear is mixed with the faith 
in our hearts so we won't miss entering into your rest. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that someone here on Wake Up With The Word who is struggling with trying to figure things out on their own, I pray that they would stop trying to figure, figure it out and God fall on their knees and cast their cares on you. God, uh, help us to learn how to live our lives with faith, with hope, and with love. And God, I believe that you'll make sure that all of our needs are met according to your riches in Christ Jesus. So God, I pray for, my, for, my, for the faith for my brothers and sisters. I pray for the hope for my brothers and sisters. And I pray that we will all operate in love. Love covers a multitude of sins. So God, I pray that we would pray for those who have hurt us and those who despitefully use us, for those who talk about us and those who uh, don't understand us. But God, I pray that we would never get pushed into a cesspool situation, but that we would stay in a place of love. God, be with us and guide us and keep us is my prayer. Make your face to shine upon us. Be gracious to us, God, and give your people that kind of peace, that peace that passes all understanding that will keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. We do pray as we go out of our homes to the places that you've assigned our hands to go. God, help us to understand that our jobs, our careers, our businesses are not our sources, that you are our source. They just are the resource that you're using for this time for us to be salt and light in that place. So God, help us to do what you've called us to do in the place that you've called us to do it for the season that you called us to do it in so that you can take us into the next season of our lives. God be with us and God, and we'll give your name the praise in Jesus name. Amen. Let it be so in me. What, what amen says, let it be so in me. God bless you, everybody. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Uh, give God glory. Lift your hands and give God praise and thanks. And I, I'll see you tomorrow morning, but Michi will be here. So make sure that you're going to be ready for Michi on Thursdays and Fridays. Love you. Have a great day.